in this webinar, we'll take a look at what Mern stack is, and then we'll build a Mern stack application from scratch. So the agenda is we'll take a look at what full stack development is. Then we'll take a look at why full stack development is important, why so why it's so prevalent right now. Then we'll take a look at the components of full stack development. So we'll take a look at what are the different aspects of full stack development that you need to take care of. Then we'll take a look at the Mern stack. We'll discuss what Mern stack is, what are the technologies available in that. And then we'll have a demo in which we'll be creating a Munch stack application from scratch. This is full stack development. A full stack development is basically uh, something that is done when a developer can create both the front end and the back end. Front end is the client side, back end is the server side. Front end is the application that loads in your browser. So all the buttons, images, layout, carousels, form, accordions, all the things that you see in your browser when you load a web page, it's the front end. It's created by a front end developer or a full stack developer who's proficient in the front end side of the thing. And the back end is obviously the server. We'll explore that in a moment. So why should you want to learn full stack development and why companies want full stack development? Full stack development has several advantages, such as cost effective. Since a developer can do the job of two developers, both front end and back end, it's obviously cost effective. And as a person as EA, understanding of both front end and the back end can maintain both sides of the application, so it's easy for them to integrate both of them. So it leads to easier has transferable skills. If you're using one stack, then you have skills that you can transfer from front end to back end, such as programming if else while loops. And also if you're using one stack, then you're using JavaScript to the back end. Since JavaScript being used on easily understand how to get started. Now let's look at the components of full stack development. So there are three major components of full stack development. Yeah. So the three components are the back end and the database. Database is mainly covered by the back end developer, so that's why it's not really considered a separate component. But since data modeling is part of back end development, a separate component you don't need to work with particular database, you can just keep everything in memory, like in a hash table or something, and it's easier to understand. Front end is what the client will use. Back end is what we as developers of, or back end developers can create on the server side, which will take the request, parse the request, and store it inside the database. And then databases could be SQL and no SQL. SQL databases are your simple MySQL and uh, PostgreSQL. And uh, we MongoDB. Or right. people are saying that my voice is not audible. Uh, can please people confirm that I am or not? If I'm audible, then uh, please put it in the question box so that I can understand if everything's set up correctly. Okay, so some people are saying I'm audible, and some people are saying that my voice is breaking. All right, let me just check it out first, and then I'll get back. Yeah, all right, all right. Just hang on a second. I think there's been some technical issues. Yeah, so I'm audible to some people, but uh, okay, fine. So it's it's a problem with some people. I think there might be connection issues with your uh, uh, with your go to webinar. I recommend that you log off and then log into go to webinar again, and that would clear some things up. Okay. All right. Now we are done with full stack. And now we take on to MERN stack. So MERN is basically an acronym, uh, a shortening of lack of technologies that we will be using. The technologies we'll be using are MongoDB, ExpressJS, ReactJS, and Node.js. MongoDB is uh, MongoDB is the database that we'll be using. It's a NoSQL database, and you do need to have it installed as well. I'll show you where you can install that as well. Then you need ExpressJS. ExpressJS is the backend framework. So instead of you having to write the entire code to get the request, parse it, get the headers, get the payload, and everything else, you can just use ExpressJS. Then there's React. React, the front-end library, it's very popular. I'm sure many must, many of you might have heard of it. It's very popular. It's got lots of opportunities. It's uh, very, uh, it's in its 16th version, so it's very stable as well. And there's Node.js. So Node.js is the back language that we'll be using. Node.js allows us to write JavaScript code to create backends, and we'll be using exactly that. So to use Monstack, all you need is JavaScript. You don't need to know any other language. Even MongoDB uses JavaScript uh, syntax, so you can use that there as well. Uh, what about AngularJS? 
All right. So Angular is another front end framework that leads to mean stack. That is another technology stack that you can use. So you can use mean stack, you can use mon stack. That depends on your preferences. I prefer to use mon stack mainly because it works clearly. It's very easy to use React once you get over the initial hurdle, which I'll try to get over, help you get over with. So we'll take a look at that as well. You can use Angular, you can use Vue, you can use Svelte. There are uh, other libraries as well, such as Aurelia JS and many others. You can use any of the libraries. Just understanding the basic concepts of these libraries and then using it is enough for people, right? All right, so now it's kind of time for demo. First, I'd like to give you the links. So this is the link where you can download Node.js and then click on this button. It allows you to download Node.js 12.18.3 it says LTS. LTS stands for long term that this version will not be deprecated anytime sooner. On the other hand, you have 14.9.0, which is the current version, the latest version. And there are no specific features that are available in 14.9 that we'll be using. So I recommend that you use 12.18. Download it and installing it. Just click on the installer and click next, 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 and you install it. And then for React, after you have installed the uh, JS, you don't need to do anything because React application it says you need to type in npx create react app my app and it will create the application. I'll show you what it means. Just make sure that the Node.js version so if you have is greater than 8.10 and npm version is greater than 5.6 and it will work. So do that. Also, if you are willing to install uh, MongoDB, which is uh, the database that I'll be using. You can as well. You would have to firstly go and search MongoDB on the internet, which you can go to Google and type MongoDB. As I just did, this is the link that will open MongoDB.com. Here you can download by hovering over the software button. Uh, the site is still loading. I think, as you can see, this is the this is the entire website. You click here and you go to Community Server, which we'll be using. Enterprise Server is the advanced version, which is used by Enterprise address. We use. We are not uh, going to be doing anything that requires the enterprise edition, and it costs you a bit. So you can just look at community server. Click here. You can open it up, and you can download it. You can even do it in cloud, but uh, that would be a little tricky to set up. So I would do that. You can just download. It. it has detected the version that I want and form. And since the platform is Windows, it's giving me an MSI. I can just click on download and start download. Although I already installed it, I won't do it now. Uh, hopefully, you guys have installed it. Uh, in case you are not clear on something or you have any questions, otherwise, we'll continue with this. Yeah, someone has asked Is Django but an alternative of Mern? So, Django could be considered an alternative of ExpressJS, uh, not the Mern stack entirely because Mern stack also involves uh, databases and all. Django could be used with uh, MongoDB as far as I'm aware. You can use Django there as well. Uh, Django is mainly for Python developers. So if you are a Python developer, you can create using Monstack. It won't be a problem. Or you can create using Django. Depends on how you wish to do this. I prefer using Monstack because JavaScript is much easier to learn and Python, although much easier to learn, it gets time to set up. So it's your choice. You can do it however you wish to. Yeah, how to install MongoDB. To install MongoDB, as I've said, go to mongodb.com. Click uh, hover over the software button. Click on Community Server. This link will open up, and click the download button. It will download, then double click, and install it as a normal software will be installed. So MongoDB and Node.js is installed. Is there any other software? No, just MongoDB. Someone has asked, what is Mongo Atlas? So Mongo Atlas, as far as I'm aware, is the cloud solution of MongoDB. Either it's that or the graphical user interface. Yeah, it's the GUI platform for MongoDB. So if you want to not use the command line interface, but you wish to use the client uh, graphical user interface, much like uh, SQ, MySQL Workbench, that allows you to do that. So you can use that there as well. So now we'll begin with coding. I will sh firstly show you my setup. So I have created an application folder named To Do App. Inside it, I created two folders, front end and back end. And I'll show you how I set them up. Uh, look in the chat box and you will see the link. Uh, let me just I think that will work as well. Yeah, I have sent you the answer to your question in the question box as well. And you can look at through the chat box as well and you can find it there as well. All right, so with that, I will show you how I set this up. I, by creating a new folder named setup, 
and inside it i'll set everything up as i did earlier right so open up a command window here uh, hopefully font is big enough for you to see and i misspelled setup but that's fine you create two folders firstly create a backend folder right after creating the folder cd into the backend folder cd basically means open your command window there or you want to just create the folder go to the uh, command folder back folder and type cmd and press it it open up here as well i already have it opened up so i won't do that and now after installing node.js look at the version of npm npm is the package manager that is to install software using node.js 6.9 uh, later later versions are available but i'm using the 6.9 version because it's working correctly now i need to firstly install type the command that i am typing for that i have to initialize a node.js project initializing means that this folder will contain a node.js project so create the basic file structure and directory i press enter dash dash y basically gives ans to everything this is what's created and if i take a look at the window there is a package.json file created if you followed the steps that i have followed then this will work correctly right uh, and after that you need to install your dependency so i'll just show you npm install dash d need to install node mode i'll show you what the dash d flag means in a moment just the steps that i am following and then i'll show you what each of them means now after running this because i already have the things set up I want to run it again let it finish don't close it like i'm closing it and after that type in press force mongoose this is what you need to type after typing npm i dash the node mode and letting it finish also press enter again i already have these things installed so i won't do it now i'd show you what these things mean right so if i open my code editor which is visual studio code inside my folder i create after installing things package node modules will be created and package node json dot log files will be created so what this does is the that it things node one will restart our server whenever we make a change so instead of us writing the code saving the and then closing the server and then restarting again it will work exactly the way we expected and these things are done for specific reasons first we install course course means cross origin request sharing or so of course cross origin request inside when we're creating uh, the backend and the front end will be hosted on some other domain backend hosted domain so both of them both of them need to communicate to each other to share resources because of which we need to install course normally servers won't allow us to do that but if we have course enabled then it will work the last command that i installed oh, the last command that i installed was let me just type it npm i express mongoose course I've sent it you can take a look at that it's npm install i've sent it to the uh entry in the look at that as well all right after this i have installed course express is the backend framework that we'll be using and mongoose is the object mapper what this does is it allows us to connect to mongodb and use our javascript syntax to manipulate the object i won't be you i won't showing you the object being shown in uh, saved inside the mongodb uh, mongodb servers because that will work just fine right after this our back end is done for the front end i'll show you the command that you need to run so through npm install you can install express not mongodb mongodb needs to be installed via the steps that i've showed you uh, mongoose is the library that allows us to connect and query mongodb servers using express js so that will work fine all right and now for creating the front end of the application again go to the startup folder or setup folder that i had created and you can create whatever folder you want just make sure the back end and the front end are both alongside each other as you can see the back end folder is there create front end folder i need to type npx space create react app this is a this is a package that is already installed with node.js so you don't need to do anything all right and with that you need to type in the name of the application i am calling it front end you can call it whatever you want you can call it to do front end you can call it anything i am calling it front end press enter and this will take some time 
because the create react app takes some some time this is why i created a new folder because i already have these things installed let me just open it i will now delete the back uh, set of folder in the back end folder we already have everything installed in the front end folder after creating the uh, react application by using the thing that i did yeah i uh, you can do these things in windows 7 as well it will work just fine i am using windows 10 because that's the operating system i have installed but you can do it in windows 7 as well so this is these are the things that are created by uh, create react app you don't need to do much now open this folder in which you have backend and front end in any code editor you want if you don't want to use any code editor you can use uh, notepad but that would be difficult to follow i am using visual studio code you can use any code editor you want sublime text at notepad plus plus i just created this folder here it contains both the back end and the front end show you how to use them in a moment right so that is done and uh, now what we have to do right so we have created everything that we want now first thing that we have to do okay so inside the back end folder now we will create our back end first thing we will create is an index.js file js is the ex extension for structured files so for find out what is the what is the syntax scheme that it has to use we give it the extension right and we need the backend for to interact with our database which is basically called the persistence create a folder named persistence and i will create another folder inside backend named so so these folders will contain specific code relating to database and the server logic right all right start so inside again create js and inside i will create index.js so three index.js files are created one in the top folder backend the other in the server folder and the other one in persistent folder i'll show you why we are creating those in a moment right now the first thing that we have to do is we have to create the folders so we need models and repository these are the two things so let's just create those i'll show you what those mean in a moment as well inside persistence another folder model and a repository i think i moved it incorrectly let me move persistence folder everything fine this is the folder structure inside backend folders not the folder that you need to create after you have installed everything this will be installed inside persistence we have model repository so this all right so that we will that we will so let's begin now that we have created all the folders we will be creating a to do api an api is basically a back end that serves your data in a required format so if i want to use it in a json format i'll be using an api json is basically a format in which you can exchange data so we will be exchanging data from the back end to the front end a good way to understand an api is when you visit websites like google or when you will visit websites like linkedin in which you can log in using google or facebook or any other authentication provider uh, linkedin doesn't have access to the database of facebook or google what they do is they send google servers a few username and password the username and password is sent to google server and google server will respond whether or not the username and password exist in their database and are they correct or not if both of the things are correct and they exist then google's uh, database servers will react uh, will respond with the uh, with the important information that the person might need to create their account on linkedin such as their uh, their age their date of birth and uh, their name their full name and so on and so forth that google server has so that you don't have they don't have to build the application and you don't have to fill the form again and again so that's what apis allow us to do they allow us to create a url through which we can share just the bit of data that we need to be able to share in the database we can store different kinds of information in various different formats but uh, you know, from the front end we can just share the data that we need to share that the person wants to know all right so inside our model folder inside our persistence folder there is a model folder inside it i will create a folder a file name to do dot model dot j 
misspelled it. Let me just rename it. Yeah. So the model in the MVC architecture is basically a, a part of the application that deals with the data. So how you create a database, how you store things in a database, all of this is done in to-do. And since we're creating a to-do application, we'll be able to do that. Now, since we have installed MongoDB, just follow along with the code that I am writing and it will work fine. Forms, mongoose, just to require mongoose, right, yeah. You create the mongoose, uh, mongoose de decimals. So we have created the, uh, we have required the mongoose dependency. That means we'll be using the mongoose tree. Now we need a schema. A schema basically describes to the database what shape of our data will look. Since we're using to do, we need a description as well as the uh, after getting the description, we need whether or not the to do is completed or not. So well, for that, what we can do, we can create a schema. I will call it to do schema mongoose.schema. And since this is a class, I would have to use the new keyword. And here I will pass in everything that I need. So the first thing that I want is description. So a to do will have a description that will describe all of description. Make sure that the spelling correctly. Now we can describe what the data should look like inside description. And inside description, we need the type to be string and required to be true. So any to do that is created needs to have a description. Second thing, better name done. So this way, this is what it will contain to be boolean and the default value is false so if uh, we are not provided a value then we will default it to false every to do it is by default uh, incomplete now all we have to do is just export it basically means once you've created some things in your files what are the things that you want to return from this file so if someone wants to access something from files the things that you export are the things that they access so module dot export since we have created only one thing we need to create a model out of mongoose dot model and instead we need to pass in the name of the model the name of our model is to do and it's containing to do ski that's it that's all you have to, do to create the model we have so these are the things that we have created this is the code that we have created I'll be switching the tabs now. So in case you need access to this code for later on, screenshot it so that you can type it in your own time. So I'm waiting for 10 seconds. You can screenshot it and then I'll move on to the next bit, which is creating the repository, which will access, allow us to access our data. All right, hopefully you guys have taken the screenshot. Now inside the repository folder, I will create a new file name to do dot repository dot case you guys can create the same files uh, the code i will uh, if you want i can put the code in github after a while and then you can take a look at that you would have to contact the support team and get access to it and you'll be able to get the access to the code right so this is what we'll be doing in the repository in the repository what we need is we need to firstly require the to-do model so const to do is equals to require and since we have created it inside the model folder, which is one folder up in the model to do dot model and we're done. So now we will use this to access our database. So what are the things that we want to do? Since we're creating a create, read, update, and delete functionality, we need to be able to find all to do's. So firstly, once find all to do's, it is going to be a function. So this function, is going to be able to find all to do's, right? Uh, finding all to do's basically means that what we're trying to do is we're trying to get all to do's. So this is a function and inside it to do dot, as you can see, we can use the find method. Inside the find method, we can pass in this matcher. This means that anything that you have inside it, return it back to me. All right, so this is the function. The next function that we want is we want to be able to find things by ID. Find by ID or rather find to do by ID is going to be a function, an async function. 
this function will take in an id and will return to do dot find by id inside it will pass in will pass in the id and that's all we have to do now the third thing that we need to do is we need to add a to do now adding a to do is supposed to be very simple all we have to do is get the data then inside the using the to do model that we have created we will pass in the data and then return the response right so all we have to do here is use the const or add to do this is going to be a function an async function that will take in the parameters inside the params what we need is we need to first extract the data that we want so we will use it's going to be equal to params so inside from params i want the description as well as whether or not things are done with that all i have to do is create a to do inside the to do i need to pass in the parameters so and now i need to return the same data so once i save it it will go to the database perform the queries with the data that i have provided it will return back the response that it gets now we have to update the to do so since we are creating a crud api crud stands for create read update and delete so to update a to do again we need to create an async function async functions are basically functions that uh, tell the node.js runtime that this is going to take some time because we are going to the database getting the data and then saving to the database sometimes databases could be on other servers and that could take some time as well so that's why we are using async functions inside it since we are updating the to do we need the id as well as the parameters now all we have to do is we'll use something similar i'll just copy and paste the code here firstly we'll get the description and the done flag then we will create the to do but instead of using new to do we need to do dot find and update and when we call find and update find one and update would be the thing that we would have to use find one and update so it will just update one query for that we need to pass in the id as the id and the data that needs to be updated so if any of the things have changed that will it will save it send it back to us and we're done we'll send back the to do with that we have created the update functionality and now finally we just need to delete it so if someone wants to delete they'll just give us the id of the to do and we'll delete it delete to do async id and with that all we have to do is and you can use the await keyword to do dot find one and delete this will return back the response that we want and the id needs to be the id that we had given that's it and now all i have to do is expose the functions that i want to expose if there were some internal functions that i don't want the uh, other files to be able to access then i can just not expose them here since i want to expose everything i'll just find all to do's find uh, by id add to do update to do delete to do two three find to do by id is the one that i have not exposed so i'll just do that right so now everything's working it's fine so the structure we import everything we want at the top we write the code that we want to to perform the task and we expose the functionality that we want at the bottom now that we have created the repository as well finally inside our index.js i need to connect to the server and for that all i have to do is firstly import mongoose mongoose is delete missing something let me see no i don't think it's missing return now it's working fine uh, we'll see when we run the code there might be some issues and we'll fix, fix those as we go along right so we have created the mongoose folder now what we need to do is after this we need to do one more thing which is is global global dot promise 
on those dot coms right so this is just some functionality bit async and this is a function that will call in order to wrap everything up with that we can just call mongoose dot connect inside the i would have to await it because it will take some time inside the connect function i will pass in the url if you have installed it locally then this would be mongodb colon forward slash forward slash localhost colon 27017 27017 this is the port on which mongodb is listening and the collection that i'll be using is to do this is the name of the database now i need to pass in a few options to help it understand how i want to connect so use new url parser this is going to be true this is just con some configuration then use unified topology and as you can see visual studio code is helping out and uh, finally use find and modify to be true all right everything's done use find and modify is supposed to be false i'm sorry and now we will be able to use the functions that we want now we need uh yeah it's working fine we have created the functions it will connect and now all i need to do is i need to export the repository so when someone uh, someone tries to import it it will run this code connect and then expose the repository require repository slash to do dot repository that's all i want to expose and now that everything's working or at least i hope everything's working inside the yeah so in persistence we are done all right so now let's take a look at whether or not everything's working inside my uh let's see persistence is done inside my uh, index.js and server.js let's just try this out all right so first thing i'll do is uh, to do is equals to require oh sorry requires misspelled persistence so with that all i need to do is i need to install the persistence api and uh, everything will be imported and it will be connected and i will just need to in import the express framework as well so what was the command to create the application i'll paste it in npx create dash react dash app and i've sent it to you you can take a look take a look at that all right so inside it we want to firstly connect so i will just create a folder a, uh, sorry not a folder a function which is equal to a function which will take in a port and a callback function and what it will do is that it will app dot listen on the port and then use the callback function and now all i have to do module dot export and finally inside the index for js i will require from the server the start function and then start in with the in the start function all i need to do is pass in a few options so port is going to be 8000 callback is going to be console.log listening on port data right uh, i need to yeah so this will work let's see if we have wired everything correctly we first need a uh, our command line inside it so that we can run things and uh, since we have installed node one inside my package.json file inside the scripts folder i can just run the development server using nodemon index.js so we can run npm run dev 
press enter hopefully this will work node bond has started okay and it's working correctly so everything worked fine it connected to our database everything went fine okay something went wrong find by id find by id is not defined because it's fine to do by id okay thankfully we have we caught the error trying to do by id and since i've saved it as you can see instead of having to close the server and restart it it's working correctly on its own now it's connected everything's working now we need to define the route so i just close everything off and i will open up the server here we'll create the api and then we can test it so the first thing i have to do before we do it we need to do some cleanup we need to perform some um some configuration so i need to firstly import course now i have to right and now i need app dot use course yeah. and since i want my express server to be able to parse json data i just need to pass it json that's the that's all the things that i need to do to make it work right everything's working fine now and now all i need to do is write the server here and this is where we'll be using express js in case you're not familiar with express it's a lightweight substitution for uh, any big framework so if you have used django uh, express is more familiar to flask so flask is very much the same thing right so when we get get request are used using the urls when we get a get request to slash to do's we want to execute this function in which which is an async function which gets request and response and what we want is we want to find all to do's and return the response so response dot and find all to do's and since this is an async function we would need to await the response right so if everything's working correctly i would firstly open postman this is the application if you have postman installed then you can follow along if you don't then that would be a little difficult but we'll be able to integrate it with our api no no matter what so i have the postman app installed here it is i'll just open it yeah it's opening up here it is let's see if our, yeah our server is working correctly it's not raised any issues by now yeah it's preparing the workspace it's opening things up So everything's done, it's updated as well. That's good. Inside we have a get all to do's function. We're listening in port 8000. So we send the request. Hopefully everything will work. And we got back the response. This is what everything that we have. I populated the database already with some data so that we can see. And it didn't throw any errors. So that's good. All right. Now let's start after creating the get route. Let's start by creating a route that allows us to get only the uh, only one to with the ID. So we get the request and response. And here we just need to pass in instead of find all to do's, we need to find to do by ID and request dot params dot id so what's happening is we will pass the uh, id using the url parameters and this will be captured by our request and it will return the response so we save it let's take a look at the server everything's working fine now we go not here but uh, here yeah and let's take a look at this id get to do by id is the one that we'll be using is the id that i will paste it's a get request i send the request await the response and it's getting me back the id so if i want just a single to do i can do it with this i don't have to because we'll be using a crud application but since it's fine to have it all in one this is how it will work now we need to know how to create a to do that is a bit complicated so creating take 
it's in the form of using a post request so i just use post the post request will be sent to slash to do's inside the post request again it's an async function inside the async function we need request and response and uh, inside it the first thing that we have to do is we need to await the response so await add to do inside add to do we need to pass in the parameters so and the parameters we'll get is from request.body so it gets us the parameters it adds the to do and then we need to just do response dot send and we can just return the response as well to audio so it's the to do that is created and this will work fine i save it let's see if i have not misspelled anything it's corrected now i just need to create a to do go to create to do i need to click on body because i want to send in some body the body will be sent using json to do three click on send okay i'm getting an error this is a problem cannot post to to do oh sorry it's supposed to be to do that was the issue right everything's working fine we got the to do back and now if i go to get all to do's and it i get the third to do here as well so it's saved in the database directly now we need to update a to do all right inside the body i have the description important to do i will firstly the to do that i have created was this one so i just get the id and just change it there right and i need to send it now for that i need the code so to do that app dot put i think this might might later return some error let's see we need to send it to the same thing is slash to do slash colon id a sync function the function needs request and response and uh, to do it we need to do the same thing that we had been done earlier so i'll just copy and paste the code and just a few things will be different i'll show you what they are we need to pass in the params dot id so id will be passed in as well as the body now we back the response save it okay so i sent it back let's see if the response okay i think some error is there and it is it says this description is required okay maybe i have not properly formatted the data and to do is here i cancel the request important to do done is true send it again right there is some error let me just run it again right inside the code i am getting the response oh sorry it's not add to do it's update to do now it will work that was the issue send okay it's still getting the same error find one and update cannot run without model make sure that you are not calling new model find one and update All right okay. let's see hmm. fine let's just check if something's wrong with the model so we go to the model we have created the model we have everything correctly set up inside the repository so oh, it's not new to do that is the issue okay it's working fine again so as you can see there are some issues again i send it back and now i've got the response back and it's working fine so it's done it's working correctly everything's working fine now if i get all to do send the request as you can see important to do and done is true so it's working correctly and now finally we need to delete a to do to delete a to do we need to just uh, no, it won't work i need to pass in this here and i need to use the delete function so to delete a to do all i have to do is find one and delete and i just need to pass in the id right so inside it again it's going to use the same thing but instead of this i need delete async function request and response delete to do and inside delete to do all i need to do is pass in the id not the body save it let's see and the request would it work and it's working fine 
we get the to do's if I go to get all to do's so now we're getting only two so our CRUD functionality is done backend is complete this is our server now if you are wondering why we have separated everything into separate folders and what's the benefit of all of this we could have very easily just put everything inside index.js and that would work fine as well however what happens is this couples are impl uh, our uh, implementation so tomorrow someone comes along and says that uh, mongodb is no longer supported and we need to use some other database server such as fauna db or uh, amazon's uh, amazon's own uh, uh, cloud native databases or cosmos db from azure or any other database now what we have to do is just make changes to all these things inside our single file but in, if you are using the architecture that we're using right now i will just have to change these uh, persistence modules in, inside inside this i can change everything and uh, if they are returning the same thing that they are returning right now it will work fine so inside my server i don't need to change anything i just need to make sure that these are the five functions that are being exposed and then i can just let it work the way i work and changes in the database won't affect changes in the server changes in the server won't affect how our application is being run by using the uh, start function so if we were to use any other framework as well such as happy js we just need to expose this function that takes in a port and a callback and we just need to do it that way and that will work fine as well all right i think we are on nearing the end and now we can start with the front end of a back uh, since the back end is created as you can see it's running on port 8000 and this command line is occupied i need to create a new command line and open it in the front end front end folder is here we created it using the command that i had pasted in the question box as well as in the chat box npx create react app front end to run this i need to run npm run and start press enter now this will start using the react scripts so everything is created for us we don't need to go through the entire tooling system create a webpack dev server and all of that you need you needed to do that at the beginning but now since they have created create react app you don't need to do that anymore this will take some time so take a few moments uh, write this in your terminal and let it open up a window in your browser i think it will open up in localhost port 3000 but let's see so as you can see it's starting the development server it's opening up the server this working it's starting the development server so again as i said it's going to take some time so it's working this is the default react js application as you can see in here we have compiled everything successfully this is the localhost on our pc if you are on a shared Wi-Fi or on a network, your peop, any other person can just log on to 192.168.43252 colon 3000 or maybe something is different in your PC and you are getting a different URL and they can run it on their system as well. Right. Now we'll write some code. We'll be creating the front end of a to-do application. We'll, we won't go through it entirely because right now not a lot of time is left, but I'll show you how we're doing things. So the first thing it's asking us in our code editor is we can edit the source slash app.js file so i'll go here i will close the backend folder which is already closed inside our source folder we have an app.js folder and it has a lot of things by default and we don't want all of this so we will clear some things out i want react don't want the logo don't want the css file and the syntax that you're looking here is called jsx i don't like this syntax i can just use export the Fold. right and i can just write p to do that save it and it reloads automatically so i don't have to do that i need everything is done and inside my index.js let me just see right i hope nothing's being loaded here yeah, yeah. as it is being loaded here as well right everything's working fine so the this is all the changes i have to make this looks like uh, where you are writing html in javascript but what this does is that it compiles everything down to this so react dot create element inside it we need to pass in a few options so inside the options we pass in things like children and all of that but we don't want to do this here so using this syntax is much easier so that's why they have created this 
now we'll create a to do application inside it i'll first create a new folder in which we will create everything so the folders name as i will be putting here is components right so right now inside it i will create a new file i will call it to do app.jsx jsx is the uh, syntax that we are using when creating react and it will be compiled to javascript automatically using the tools that we have set up so this is done now i need to make a few changes in this file as well so again the first thing i will do is i'll instead of doing this i will just to do app and i need to import to do app from and i need to first export it so first let's import react from react this is installed automatically because of the create react app that we used and now i need to just export the called function to do app return well, import to do app from components to do app we close it save it it's reloading and everything's working okay now in our to do app we need a form in which we will add to do and a to do list which will show all the to do's these are the two components so i'll just lay them out here we need a form so i will call it to do form and we need an app a to do list all of this inside react we can only export elements wrapped inside a single element so i can just do this right this is this is called react dot fragment if i wrap it inside two tags that have nothing compiler will take a look at this and create a react dot fragment it is just used to wrap two things with each other before this we would have to create a div tag and all of that here we don't need to do that right i need to now create two things which is to do form dot jsx this is not to do from to do form okay and i will just copy this again i have misspelled the word to do form instead of to do form i have written to do from i do this mistake quite often all right now we have to to do form inside the to do form we need to pass in a few things we need to create a form action is supposed to be nil when we submit things i want to prevent the default behavior which is submission and it will cause a reload in react apps we don't want our forms to reload our page so we would don't want to use that and we need a label and an input so we'll just label inside the html for we want it for all we need to give is description by default the to do will be done and description and an input type of text id for the for tag description that's about it so save this and just okay it's not defined okay i need to import it save it and it's working fine right so this is the form i need a button it has the word add in it right so it's working fine and now i need it to do list we will come back to the form and add the functionality so to do list i need to first create a new file call it to do list jsx and the list is all this is going to do is it's going to take some to do's so i'll just copy and paste some of the code don't need this instead of app it's to do list You're right so in to do list we will expect some data this data is given as props so in react we can store data in a component in two function two ways state and props props are just data that's passed to the function or to the component and state is the data that it creates on its own so if it gets data from some database or some server or from user input that state it keeps track of the data reloads the component every time the data changes props is basically data that's given to it so it says okay i don't know what the data is just give me the data and i will handle the uh, i will handle everything about the data itself so first we'll get all the to dos that we want 
now what we want is okay if there are to do's which means if it's not null then right so then return this so if there are to do's then what we want is we want to go to to do's dot map oh and that needs to be inside a ul because right, because this yeah to do's dot map inside the map we're getting a to do and we want to return a single component which is named to do inside the to do i want the key key is a prop that allows react to understand what's going on so i need to and another thing is we need to pass in the data so we pass in the to do right everything is done to key and to do is passed and now i need to create a to do app in case it's not this then i need to just pass in loading so if it's loading the data it's not gotten the data or we have gotten a null response we just pass in loading in case we have gotten the data we just map over it and display it so i need to create another component i will call it to do dot jsx the reason why i need to create components like this is because these things can then be interchanged so import to do from to do and i'll just copy and paste all of this i didn't need to do this right and i want the to do function so to do so it's just to do and i don't need to do the ternary checks because it's just going to handle one state it is only going to load when the data is there otherwise it's not going to show it is supposed to be a list item that's it so we get the to do and we want to show the description description right and we want it to have a delete button as well so for that again so yeah and inside it we need to create a D E L E T E B U T T O N. inside the delete button i need to create another call it delete button dot jsx this is done as well and now since i need to map all of this inside a and then I, again i need to just do the same things here but inside the delete button one thing that i have to make sure is i'm just written a button the button will say as far as i i can tell it's supposed to say delete you can call it you can have it uh, display x as well that works fine for some people i i rather like to call it delete you can call it whatever you want and when you click the button we want to delete it to do so our delete button is a dumb component uh handle t e l e t it will get the function it doesn't need the to do right so this is done we will handle the to do inside it we need to pass in a handle delete function and this is being passed in from the to do app or the to do component rather so for that all we have to do is we need to use it here and then delete and then delete inside the to do list application since we are we are creating the to dos here we need to create the handle delete function here as well so inside the to do list application just create a handle delete function and all we have to do is handle delete the to do dot underscore id so this will delete the handling of a particular id and again this will 
from some of our server. All right, and now finally this app is being rendered by this. So I will just, and we will get an error that says to do list is not defined because we have not imported it. All right, and now we need to just check. Maybe I forgot to export. Yeah, I did save everything. Okay, everything is done. Delete button is not defined. Delete button is the export that we're doing. We're getting it here and we're not importing it. So just import it. So to import it, every, everything needs to be imported from save it. And now it's working. But now it's stick, stuck in the loading state because we have not fetched anything from our server. Now this is where we come to integrate our server, right? So this is what we need to do. First thing we need to go to our to do app dot JSX and we need to be able to store some data and this is done using state. So I will store some data in to do's to do's is the function. This is these are called react hooks. So react dot use state so inside the state. We pass in null because by default it's null and then we will update the data now to update the data. What we have to do here is we have to use the other function called react dot use effect. What this allows us to do is let me just write it react dot use effect. Now inside the use effect we want to fetch the data. So we call the fetch function. Fetch function is built into the browser, so we just need to call it. We need to pass in the URL. In in our case, it's HTTPS localhost 8000 which is a server address and to do which is the which is what we want right so we get the data and now we use promises so dot then we get data now we need to parse the data as json so we do that because we know our data is going to be returned as json and then we just set to do with the data so we can call the function here with data but i like to do this this will automatically call the function and if there is an error then i want to also lock the error I save this this is what it looks like now let's just pass the data to to-do list so to do's to do's now if i go to the to-do list app we are getting the to-do's here and we are mapping it but it's not working here. Let's see why we open the console. We have an error failed to load network resource protocol error. Maybe I've closed the server or something has happened. No, the server is working correctly. Port is 8000, colon 8000 slash to do localhost, colon 8000 slash to do. Let's see error here. It's working correctly, and oh, maybe the issue is that. Okay, let's just check HTTP, right? All right, so now our to do is being loaded correctly. The delete buttons are showing, but yeah. So now let's take a look at this. Now, I when we click the delete buttons, we want the thing to be deleted. And we when we type something inside a description box and click on add, the things are supposed to be added. So let's just create the two functions we want to. Handle add and we want to handle delete. Handle delete. Right. This is a function. All right. And inside the handle add function, we just need the description. So we'll do that. We accept the description. Then we use again the fetch function. Inside it, we will type HTTP localhost 8000 and uh, on the to do's front, but as you remember, the method needs to be post. I just put it on a new line because I know there's a lot of things that we need to type in. After post, just remove this. After post, we need the body. 
body is going to be equal to right so inside the body i need a to do i can create it myself but i'll just do it this way to do equals an object which contains description equals to description and done by default is false it's done and json dot stringify to do and that's it that's all i have to do for this one and uh, after getting the data i need to just tell the server that it is going to be this is going to be a json payload inside the headers i need to i need to type in all the headers that i want to set content type is going to be application slash json and it should be application dot json not applications everything's done and so the id that i'm using is visual studio code in case you want to download it you can go to microsoft's website they created this id uh, it's a code editor basically so we get the response from here with the data that we have created we have entered everything that we want and now just get the data converted to json and send it to to do so i just do that data needs to be converted to json and then to do will set to do's all the to do's are being created and then we'll set the to do Right. and that will create the new to do send it back and it will work just fine from our team so after we get the to do's we just want to handle the errors which is what we get if we use the catch function so inside the fair catch we just want to console dot log that's it save this it will reload and it will come okay there is some error handle add okay first of all i need to create for it function secondly i need to pass in here so handle add handle add now i go to to do form creating this again i need to save the description so description and uh, set description we use the state and it's going to be string and it's empty for now here now we need to do something this is done and uh, value is equals to description whenever things change i want to set description to event dot target dot value so whatever is being typed into a description will have it so that will be done and when we click the add button on click we want to handle add and we want to pass in the description so handle add will be accepted as a prop so everything's wired up correctly and if it is wired up correctly then it should be able to add things the last thing we have to do is we have to add a placeholder that will take care of everything so let's take a look at that placeholder will basically be displayed placeholder will be displayed to help the users understand what we want to do and i need to save it here as well okay it's working fine let's just add a simple to do click on add okay it's working fine and now i just need to handle the delete portion so to delete everything all i have to do is again use the fetch i need to send it to and i'll need the id and inside the id i just need to http localhost 8000 to do and i can do it 
using template strings like okay. and now i want method to be delete when we delete it we get back the to do so all i have to do first is convert the data to json and then what we want is we get the to do and all i have to do is set to do's to to do's dot filter and filter will allow me to remove one to do so t where t dot underscore id is not equal to to do dot underscore id and if we I lost my connection for a bit. All right, so this is what's going on. We have uh, created a handle delete function and we'll just pass it down the link. Click here. And the delete needs to be done in to do list. So handle, handle delete. Inside the to do list, handle delete is there. I'm calling the delete handle delete. So it's work fine. It should work fine. Maybe some error has occurred. Let me just see. It's a lint error. I'll take a look at this. It's working fine. Just reload this. I think we're running into some error. Let's see. Is it working now? All right. Let me just uh, where is this? Oh, yeah, there has been another error, I think. And this is being shown. Books contain all the oh in the set to do's without list of devices. I understand. Inside the use of but from this compiling correctly. It's get trying to get data, but unfortunately we're not getting the data. Let me just see if it's working correctly. Yeah. Oh okay. Okay. Right, right. I understand the issue. I passed a dollar ID as the okay. Let's take a look at this inside. Is the screen now or is it still frozen? Okay, so it's working here. But if we do it this way, it's not. So everything is working. If I click on the delete button and it's deleting, hopefully I'm not running into any errors. I'm not. And if I refresh this, okay, everything is working correctly. Right. So I'll just show you the code again. Apparently the screen froze for some moment earlier. There's some connection issues. That's why that happened. So inside the handle delete function, I passed in the ID. I made a delete request, got the data, got it down, and inside set to do's, I just removed the to do with the particular ID that I just deleted. And with that, we are done with the application. Um, the application is done. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a nice day.